Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on how to optimize your videos before making your YouTube videos live. So this is video number one which is the introduction to YouTube search engine optimization. So I want to first start out by saying the goal is to focus on doing the right amount of keyword research and video file automation before actually uploading any of it to YouTube. So essentially this is all about what most people forget about doing before making their YouTube video live. Because if you think about it, most people think about, okay, what do I do after I upload this video? They don't really think about what they have to do before making it live. So this is not about what you can do afterwards as that is a totally different focus, but rather before. So besides simple optimization, you really need to know that YouTube ranks the videos that people watch the longest. Meaning, let's say for example, that we have a 10 minute video. YouTube looks at that video. They look yes at the likes, dislikes, and comments, but they also look at, okay, do people actually watch most of this video and based on let's say a thousand views how many of those a thousand views actually watched either 50 percent or a hundred percent or how many minutes total a thousand times how many minutes was watched so they really look at how long people watch the videos as a whole meaning the more viewers and the longer that they watch that will get you ranked up further and further up. So instead of focusing on, you know, spammy tactics, tons of backlinks and all of that, our goal here is to really focus on the user experience. So what I want to do now is give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course. This is of course video number one. Video number two is going to be about competitive research or in other words, researching your competitors to kind of get a better idea of why YouTube is ranking those videos. Video number three, we'll talk about highly searched keyword terms and how you can find those for your product or service or whatever you're trying to promote. Video number four, we'll talk about your title and your description. Video number five, we'll talk about video file optimization. So we're going to optimize the actual file because each file has essentially information in it. And of course, video number six will talk about why your thumbnail is important and how to make it professional and good looking. And video number seven will talk about video length and why that matters. We talked briefly about it just now, but I'm going to dive in deeper in that video. And of course, last but not least, I'm going to give you a secret tip on how to outrank your competitors in video number eight. So before we get started, I want to talk about what you need to have in hand. You're definitely going to need your product or service and an idea of the niche that you're targeting. You also need to have a video that is ready to be uploaded. And with that said, let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. So let's talk about competitive research. You see, the best way to understand how you can rank better is to know what is already ranking in your niche or your market. So what we want to do here is we want to analyze the videos that are on the top. And I want you to specifically look at what titles, what descriptions are they using? And what thumbnails are they using that are eye catching? And what is the user experience like when you click through those videos? So let's go ahead and do some competitive research. So for the sake of making sure that we find YouTube videos that actually relate to promoting a product, what I want to do now is just to pick a product out of the blue and let's take a look at YouTube. So one product that I've been using for 
a while now, which has been really, really awesome, is called the Instant Pot. It's basically a pressure cooker that cooks food at a really fast rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop on over to YouTube.com and we're going to type in Instant Pot and see what we get. So I'm not going to click enter just yet because I'm interested in getting an idea of what kind of potential keywords that we could rank on or what potential videos that we can create. And we'll talk more about this in the next video. But for now, let's just do some basic keyword brainstorming and then of course do some competitive research. So Instant Pot, we got Instant Pot Recipes, we got Instant Pot Ribs, Instant Pot Roast. So let's just click here and see what we get. Now we can see how to use Instant Pot has 316,000 views right here. Instant Pot Chicken, top six easiest things to cook in your Instant Pot. Perfect for beginners. All right. So let's just take a look at the top three. So let's go ahead and open those up. And let's analyze them. So the first one is this one here. And let's pause the video. We'll skip the ad. All right. Okay, so how to use the Instant Pot, Instant Pot 101 for beginners. So if we think about the type of audience that the Instant Pot attracts, it, it, it attracts somebody who has a busy life, who may be a beginner at cooking and just wants a quick and easy meal done fast. So we can see that. So one thing that I like to do is I like to copy the titles to notepad just kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with so that's the title looks like she's promoting an Amazon affiliate link we can see that here Amazon dot two we've got instant pot hacks instant pot yogurt and all that so what she's doing it's very funny but she may not realize she's doing this but what she's using is a method called siloing and she's basically telling YouTube, hey, not only do I have this video on Instant Pot, I've got Instant Pot hacks, yogurt, recipes, and other recipes. So let's just copy that in here. So that's video number one. So we're going to rank it from video one, video two, and video three. Let's scroll down a bit. We've got 373 comments. I will say when it comes to YouTube, they're looking for engagement. So comments is good. Likes are good. Even dislikes are good as well. Even though dislikes are bad from a human standpoint, it tells YouTube that there is engagement. All right. So sometimes we're going to be able to view. We can't do it here, but sometimes you'll actually be able to view more data. But for now, you can't hear. Now, we can actually dig deeper if we want to. So let's just take a look at Natural Brittany's YouTube channel. Because when you're doing competitive research on YouTube, it's not just that particular video. It's actually the, the whole YouTube channel as a whole. The authority that that channel holds. So she has 116,000 subscribers. Click on the videos. She has a good amount of videos that talk about anything looks like from cooking from budgeting from grocery a lot of very similar videos so let's scroll down and now let's go ahead and take a look at the second highest ranking video so if we go back over to here and this is the instant pot chicken cook with me meal planning meal prepping Sunday setup. So let's go here, take a look. Okay, let's see here. 
So it's a 20 minute video, all right? And it has 658 likes, 5,000 views. If we take a look at this video here, this has 320,000 views and 7,000 likes. Now, notice how it says 13 minutes here and notice how it says 20 minutes here. We'll go back to this later on, all right? So we'll talk more about the, why a certain amount of time of your video is important, why the timing is important. And why is it that this lady has only 5,000 views, whereas the other lady has 300,000, and this lady is ranked right below that lady, all right? So why is that important? And why does that correlate to the time? So we'll talk more about that later on. But for now, let's just do competitive research. We're not trying to figure things out right now and go from there. So if we take a look at the description, it says cook with me as I try a new recipe with Instant Pot. So the description contains the keyword. Sunday setup. Looks like she's got some Amazon links. And if we think about Instant Pot, who could it be targeting, all right? So this lady calls out people who are trying to prep on Sunday. So if we can get an idea of who it's targeting, it's targeting mothers, it's targeting people who are busy, who maybe only have time on Sundays to set things up. And chicken is a common thing, so maybe she's getting a lot of clicks. We don't know exactly. But we know that the headline and the description work together and getting clicks. All right, back over here. This is the third one. So let's take a look at this one. So this one is eight minutes, but it has a lot more views than those other two videos. But it's shorter. It's shorter, but it has longer amount of views and it's third. It's got 11,000 likes and 600. 33 dislikes. If we scroll down, we can see that it has more comments than the first one. So why is it that the first one is number one and this one is the third one and it has more views and more comments? Well, we don't know exactly why, but I have a hunch as to why that is, which we'll talk more about ranking and what Google and YouTube is looking for later down the road. So that's that. Let's just copy that title. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video and we'll copy and paste that information to the notepad. Okay, so I went ahead and copy and paste the information. So this is video one, this is video two, and this is video three down below. So let me make this bigger. So we have this information. So. As we're kind of analyzing the competitor, we want to save this for later, but can you kind of see a similarity here? So this is calling out the target audience. This is calling out the people who are busy essentially. And top six ways, top X ways, top certain number ways is always a good title. So perfect for beginners. So if you can imagine, we already see that this title has beginners. This one's calling out perfect for beginners. And this one essentially is calling out people who are busy. So it's a target audience. So that's key. So having this in hand gives you a better idea on what potential titles and descriptions that you can have. Now you can do some deeper dive competitive research using specific tools. And one specific tool is called Social Blade. So that's socialblade.com, as you can see here. And I like to use this to kind of get a better idea of the YouTube channel as a whole. Because what you're trying to figure out is, did this person rank because their channel as a whole has a lot of traffic? Or did this person rank simply because of the titles and the description? So there's many factors that come involved, but let's take a look at naturally Brittany. So let's go ahead and copy this. And you basically want to come here and type in the username of the YouTube channel. So we'll go ahead and click this here. Okay, so we can see here that this is naturally Brittany, 116,000 subscribers. 
she's got 19 million video views. So that kind of gives us an idea of how easy it is to break through. Is it easy? Is it going to be take a little bit work or what? So let's just go ahead and open her up and let's do the same thing with the other videos. So this one is marriage and motherhood. We got that here. So she has 7 million video views. So it's about half of what we saw earlier. And this one is called Sisters, Six Sisters Stuff. And this one has about 9 million video views. So right off the bat, we can see that if we were to rank on the keyword instant pot, it's going to take a lot to break through. But the way we can break through is by using essentially subcategories of that keyword. So instant pot recipes or instant pot chicken recipe, stuff like that. So we can see that each one of these has about 100 to 200,000 subscribers. So you're going to have to be competing against that. Now, obviously, if you have a good size YouTube channel, that will usually mean that you can break through fairly easily. But if you're just starting out, then breaking through on that keyword is going to be a little bit more difficult. So the next question is, what keywords should you use? And we'll discuss that in the next video. Hello and welcome to video number three. Let's talk about highly searched keyword terms and how you can figure out what your main keyword is going to be, what your sub keywords are going to be. So one mistake that we see that many YouTubers make is simply making their own title and description. I mean, it's natural, right? But instead of deciding what you think will work, why not use what is already working and do some simple keyword research that's not going to take a lot of time. And this way you'll be able to have the right information that will help you rank on the right keywords. Now the big question is, well, how do I find these keywords? So the best way to find highly searched keyword terms is to look at the Google suggested keywords. And they are suggested for one reason, because they are used a lot. So let me show you how to find them and what they look like. Okay, so from analyzing the previous videos with the top three videos to kind of get an idea of what the titles were, what the descriptions were, if we look at the three and we refer back to this, the question is, what are the commonalities between the titles? Obviously the keyword instant pot, but we also noticed that the top one and the third one, they all have the keyword beginners. So beginners in instant pot, instant pot for beginners. All right. So if we go back up here and we go to youtube.com and we type in instant pot, what do we get? So when you have a drop down like this, this is what we call the suggested keywords. And you'll see this in amazon.com. You'll see this in google.com and other major search engines. And what this is, is high demand and highly searched keyword terms. So in other words, if a lot of people are searching for these keywords, then they'll show up in the drop down menu. Right. So instant pot chicken happens to be a very highly searched term and take a look at this. This one is related to instant pot chicken. So that means there's a lot of people searching for instant pot chicken. And that might be why this second video is ranked so high. Let's scroll down and take a look. So as we're scrolling down, I also want you to kind of keep an eye on the thumbnails because the thumbnails are key. So we got top six easiest things to cook in your instant pot. And I'll say as a instant pot user, 
I really didn't know what recipes were out there that would fit the Instant Pot. Because the Instant Pot, the way it cooks, is it pressurizes the food and you need a little bit of liquid inside it to pressurize. So what I was doing is I was looking for recipes that were specifically made for the Instant Pot. So a lot of these people that are coming here, they don't know. They're just looking for recipes. So the 30 Instant Pot recipes gives people an idea. Oh, okay, I've got 30 recipes that I can pick and choose from. So if you scroll down, it says Instant Pot Ultra. All right. So if we go back here, so Instant Pot Chicken is definitely a top one. Instant Pot Spaghetti, how to use an Instant Pot. Instant Pot Cheesecake, Yogurt, Pho, Beef, Stew, Whole Chicken, Rice, and Instant Pot Pot Roast. So these are highly searched keywords. Now let's hop over to Google and see what we get. Do we get the same thing? Do we get something different? So if you go to Google and you type in the same thing, Instant Pot, we can see that we've got Instant Pot recipes, Instant Pot chicken. So notice that the chicken and the roast beef or the pot roast seem to appear both in Google and in YouTube. So whenever you see that, that's a good sign because you got to understand people searching in YouTube are very different than people searching in Google. They don't show the exact same thing. But if they do, that gives you an idea that if you rank on that term, that you will be able to get traffic from Google and YouTube. Okay, so let's go back here. So Instant Pots Chicken. So let's just do a search and see what we get. So another place to find the Google suggested keyword terms is to scroll all the way down to the bottom. So there we go. So Instant Pot Recipe. Now these are specifics, all right? These are searches related to Instant Pot. So people are looking to buy Instant Pot Amazon. So let's just type in Instant Pot Chicken and see what else we get. So if you notice when we type Instant Pot Chicken, it gives you a more detailed view of the other keywords that are related. So for example, Instant Pot Chicken recipes, chicken and rice, chicken noodle soup, chicken thighs, chicken bog, chicken breast recipes, chicken wings, and chicken and dumplings. So let's go over here and see what we get. So Instant Pot Chicken Recipe Wings Noodle Barani Thighs. So a lot of these are actually appearing that are the same. Okay, so moving on here, we've got Instant Pot Chicken. Now let's take a look at what we have here. So what I would do is I would do the same thing, the competitive research. Now if you notice here, the Six Sisters stuff, it's a different video but it's a similar video. Now this video is different. This lady is the same. And that's another thing. So if you rank high on the main keyword, then you could potentially rank on the other smaller keywords as well. So that gives you an idea that of what content to create and what keywords to target. So we could potentially make And about Instant Pot Chicken. And what I would do is go back here. Let's say we want to title it the Instant Pot Chicken. What I would do is I would scroll here and take a look at questions people are asking. So how do I cook chicken and potatoes in Instant Pot? How long does it take to cook chicken pot, Instant Pot? We scroll down and what I would do is grab these keywords. So I would grab these keywords So what we want to do is we want to have a main keyword and then we want to have sub keywords. So the main keyword here would be instant pot chicken. 
And then the other ones would be Instant Pot Chicken and Potatoes and all, all the rest here. So having these in hand will give you a better idea on how to go about creating your titles and your descriptions so that you can target specific keywords and that you're not like any other YouTuber who is simply making up titles and descriptions just out of your head. So this way you can be strategic and rank effectively. Hello and welcome to video number four. In this video, we're going to talk about your title and your description. So let's take what you have gathered in the previous video and let me show you how to properly create your titles and descriptions. So when it comes to creating titles and descriptions, we simply need to do what we did in the previous videos, which was the competitive research. And as you can see here, we have the videos one, two, and three, the top number one, number two, and number three. And of course we have the main keywords. So we have this main keyword here. So that's definitely going to be in the title. And then of course, if you noticed, the target audience was beginners. So essentially what you're noticing here is that people are calling out the audience. And then of course they have the keyword in the title itself. And then of course you want to make sure that title main keyword and target audience is also going to be in your description. Now, what I like to do is I like to go look at magazines in that niche. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly in this case, instant pot, but it needs to be somewhat of that genre. Now, one thing that I noticed was when we took a look at the instant pot chicken, you could write out something like top six easiest things. So instead of things, you could say chicken recipes or pot roast recipes to cook in your instant pot. Or you could say something like instant pot chicken dash top six easy recipes, or you could use a number. People like numbers, especially knowing that somebody gets an instant pot for the sake of saving time. You could say top six easy chicken recipes that take less than 30 minutes. Now, obviously you have a little bit long, so let's head on over to Google here. So like I said, I like to use magazines. Magazines do a great job in creating titles. So as you can see here, I typed in instant pot magazine and to the right you'll notice that there's instant pots all time recipes so let's just go ahead and open that in a brand new window like so so it looks like we have to pay but let's just go ahead and click the free sample so we can see instant pots all time best recipes so you could do something like all time best chicken recipes or instant pot dash all time best chicken recipes or all time best chicken instant pot recipes. So obviously here we're not going to copy word for word because that's plagiarism, but we're going to use something different. We're going to tweak it around. What we're looking here is for headlines. So let's go back here. So it says everyday instant pot, 115 delicious family fresh friendly pressure cooker. So we can say everyday instant pot colon six delicious family pressure cook recipes. So everyday instant pot chicken, as long as the word instant pot chicken is in there. So we've got 66 instant pot recipes that put your pressure cooker to work. So we could say something like six instant pot chicken recipes that take less than 15 minutes. And yes, believe it or not, instant pot can literally cook something like a pot roast within less than an hour or sometimes half an hour because it's a pressure cooker. It cooks a lot faster. So that's what I like to do is I like to take a look 
at magazines. So it doesn't necessarily have to be Instant Pot in this example. It can be another food magazine. So essentially that's how to create the titles. As far as the description goes, if you take a look at what they've written here, the first one that's ranking really well, as you can see here, we've got Instant Pot 101 for beginners. So you'll notice that they are trying to target the keyword Instant Pot 101 for beginners. So they've stated that in the title and they've also put it in the description. So it says everything you need to know about how to use the Instant Pot in a beginner Instant Pot recipe. So notice that they use the keyword beginner Instant Pot twice. And then of course they got Instant Pot Hacks, Instant Pot Yogurt. And what they're essentially doing here is they're linking to other related videos. Now Google's smart enough and YouTube's smart enough to have an algorithm to read the description and think, okay, they've got other videos that they've created that are related to Instant Pot. This video must be good or this channel must have a lot of relevant information. So we're going to rank it a little bit higher because it's going to give people what they want to see. So now we look down here, it says Instant Pot Chicken. So this is the lady who is ranking really high on Instant Pot, but also Instant Pot Chicken. So it says cook with me as I try a new recipe with my Instant Pot. So we can see the keyword Instant Pot here. And as you can see, the description is really written for the user, but it contains the keywords that are necessary. So you don't need to write something like Instant Pot Chicken or something that's just a bunch of garbled information. You want to make sure that the title and the description attract people first and foremost, and then embed the keywords within. So the third one, we've got top six easiest things to cook in your Instant Pot. Perfect for beginners. So it says, today I'm sharing with you the six easiest things to cook in your Instant Pot. So you can see here, the title is here, but the title is also in the description. It says, now these are perfect if you are just starting out or even had the Instant Pot for a while. So you can see the keywords that are embedded, but it's really written for the user. And that's the way it should be because the title and the description will actually show up in the YouTube search engine, as you can see here. So we've got the title, we've got the description. So we wanna make sure that the first sentence in your description is catchy as well. Hello and welcome to video number five. Let's talk about video file optimization. Did you know that all files contain data that tells YouTube what your video could be about? Let me show you. Okay, so the way that YouTube gets an idea of what your video is about is by transcribing it. And for the most part, it can usually figure out what your video is all about if you have voice and speaking in it. Now, you can go one step further by adding the, what we call video file metadata. It's very similar to a website metadata. So for example, if you right click on any website and you click on view page source, up at the top, you're going to see a lot of what we call metadata. So right here, we can see the, the name, the title, the description, and all that information. So what that does is it tells Google essentially what your website is all about. So very, very similar in this case of what we're doing here. So what we're doing here is we are taking the video file that you have created and embedding it with more information. So besides the title and description, YouTube will be able to read the metadata inside of your video. So it'll make a little bit more sense when I show it to you. Now, it's really hard to find software out there that allows you to embed metadata 
except for a few. So one of them is called Video Converter by Wondershare, and that is videoconverter.wondershare.com. That's videoconverter.wondershare.com. So if you go here and you go ahead and download up at the top, you will be able to embed metadata. In fact, we're gonna be using that for this particular video. Now, there are other software out there like the Adobe Bridge software, which allows you to embed the metadata into your video. Now, the reason why I'm using Wondershare is because I feel like it's a lot easier to use. So if you go ahead and download this, we're gonna open this here. And what I did was I clicked add files and I chose the file. Now there's a lot of things that you can change about the video, but what we're particularly interested in is this I icon right here. So click this I icon or letter I here, and you're gonna see that it says name, language, episode name, actors, director, screenwriter, tagline, and description and comments. So what I recommend is you try to complete this as much as you can. So episode name, actors, so that would be whoever is in the video, the director, the screenwriter, which could be you, and then the tagline. What I would do is the tagline be your title, and then the description be your description. So whatever you're gonna upload to YouTube, put this as a title and put this as a description, and then for comments, I would put something like keywords. And all you have to do is click save, convert it, and done. That's the reason why we're using Video Converter because it's just so much easier with Adobe Bridge. It's easy too, but there's a lot of more options and <laughs> very easy to get confused. So once you're done with that, you save the video, your video has the metadata inside of it, and all you have to do is simply upload it to YouTube, and that's it. Hello and welcome back. This is video number six. Let's talk about your thumbnail and why that is important. You see, since our goal is to get more clicks or more views to your YouTube video, we have to rely on attracting viewers. So if you think about it, the thumbnail is the first thing people see as they are scanning to find what interests them the most. So in other words, if you think about it, if you go to youtube.com and you type in a keyword, you're going to see all the results with thumbnails, the titles, the descriptions, and all of that. So that's the first thing that they see. So let's discuss what your thumbnail should contain and what's working in your market and how to figure that out. So when it comes to having a thumbnail, you wanna make sure that it is eye-catching, meaning it shows somebody what they want. So if instant pot chicken is your main keyword, you wanna make sure that your thumbnail has something in it that entices them. So it's good to have the keyword or the title in it. So you can see right now the way YouTube works is they have an initial title or an initial thumbnail. And then after that, you can see motion. So if I put my mouse over it, you can actually see part of the video, which makes it a lot more engaging. So as we scroll down, the initial thumbnail that this woman uses is the Instant Pot. And then this one here, it says Instant Pot Recipes. So Instant Pot. So we can see the ones at the top definitely have the Instant Pot in it or a word that's chicken or a picture that has chicken in it. So it fits the keyword. Now, if you're not a professional you know, thumbnail artist or anything like that, there are different sites that you can use to get these created. Now, bear in mind that you never wanna use a thumbnail that is clickbaity or that lies to somebody because if they click on it and then the video is nothing like the thumbnail then guess what you might get tons and tons of clicks and perhaps views but you're not going to get people watching your video which is very very important which we'll discuss 
in the future videos. But for now, there are different elements that you need. So what I recommend is you go to a site called creativemarket.com. That's creativemarket.com. There are other sites like graphicriver.net, but over time we've realized Creative Market has a lot of really good designs. So what we can do here is in the search box, we're going to type in YouTube thumbnail. And we're looking specifically for templates that we can use for the thumbnail. So it says YouTube thumbnail pack. Let's go ahead and open that. There's one here. There are end cards, but that's a little bit different. That basically comes at the very end of your video. So we got urban thumbnails, different types of thumbnails. But the reason why I like Creative Market is buying templates for specifically YouTube thumbnails is going to make your life a lot more easier, especially if you can make it professional. The more professional it looks, the more professional they, you know, your viewers will click through. So if we click on this, we can kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with. And here's more thumbnails here as well. Now, over time, we've realized with YouTube thumbnails, more and more designs are becoming minimalistic, meaning it's not too fancy, but it's got just enough information to tell the person what it is all about. So it could have text, it could have pictures, but you really need to know what your YouTube video is about before you can create your thumbnail. In fact, I recommend that you create your YouTube video first and then you create your thumbnail so that you can make sure that you attract the right person. Now, what we found a little bit of a technique is to create a thumbnail that is related to essentially the end, meaning if you're creating an instant pot chicken recipe, you might want to show the chicken already cooked. So essentially what people get if they click through. So that way people think, oh, okay, this looks really nice. I'm going to click through and they're more likely to actually watch all the way through to the end. And that's what we want. We want people not to just click through, but to watch all the way till the end. And that's actually going to help us with the ranking. Hello and welcome to video number seven. Let's talk about video length in more depth. So the big question is how long should your video be? While yes, most folks have said that your video should be short due to attention span. And that's something that we've talked about in the past. And that definitely worked in the past. And that still is true that people's attention span are short. But today, in terms of YouTube, your video length should be longer, and here's why. Did you know that YouTube ranks your video based on how many minutes your viewer watches? We talked briefly about this in video number one, but I want to talk about why that is the case. Statistically speaking, most people that we have found, based on statistics that we have seen in YouTube, most people watch about 50% of a video. Even the people that are interested in a video, they watch 50% of a video. So if that, in this case, is a five minute video, an average viewer is only going to watch about 2.5 minutes. Now, here's why that is important. If you're competing against someone who has a 30 minute video and their viewers watch 15 minutes, which is about 50%, well, guess what? Even if they can have less viewers than you, they're going to beat you because they have a longer video. So if you got the 2.5, they've got the 15 minutes, they can send less people and still beat you. And YouTube will favor them in the end. Now that of course is assuming that the views are legitimate and people are actually watching. 
And that's why user experience is so important. So to give you some real live practical application, let's hop on over to YouTube and I'm going to show you proof that this works. Okay, so let's take what we learned and what we just discussed and apply it to some real life practical application. So if we head on back over to youtube.com, we type in the keyword instant pot recipes, we can see this one, this one, and this one. So let's go ahead and open these up. So we got this one, this one, and this one. So that's one, two, and three. The first one has about roughly eight minutes or, or nine minutes. We'll say nine minutes. The second one has about 27 minutes. And the third one has about 20 minutes. Okay. So essentially the second and third have about double the amount of time. So like we talked about, most people watch about 50% or less and then they quit. That's the average, right? So if that's the case, this person here, even though they have more views, see that 800,000 views, even though they have more views, they're competing with somebody with a 30 minute video. Essentially it's 27 or 28, but close to 30. So if we round that, we'll just say this is 10, this is 30 and this is 20. All right. So let's keep it at even numbers. So if that's the case, there's four minutes here. 15 minutes here and 10 minutes here. So this means that the person with the less amount of minutes, they're going to need a lot more views and a lot more people watching it. So in total, if this person has, obviously this person's number one, but what I'm saying here is because YouTube looks at how many minutes are watched, if this person had 800,000 views, and this person had only half of that amount, but had more than double this amount, this person right here would most likely rank higher. So see that only a hundred thousand views, 15 minutes, this one here, 20 minutes, only 6,000 views. So you might ask, well, shouldn't this be maybe number one? Not necessarily. If we really look at it, so we've got 800 times four minutes, and that's not going to be exact. I mean, we could even take 500 and this is definitely going to be number one. And this is definitely going to be number two based on the information. But this person, because they have a long enough video, even though they have less amount of views, they're still able to rank pretty high. So this is based on one of our YouTube channels, which has over you know, nine millions of minutes watched. And based on that, that's what we've seen. Now there's other factors like likes, dislikes, comments, and other things like that, titles and descriptions, but that's a big, big, huge ranking factor because it legitimately tells Google and YouTube, Hey, this YouTube video is legit. Not only people are clicking on it, they're actually viewing it and they're viewing at least about 50% on average. So that's why the video length is important. Now you don't want to make a long video just to make a long video. You might want to make a video that has really good content. And that's the goal. It's not based on spammy backlinks or anything like that. It's based on providing real value. Hello and welcome to video number eight. So just want to say congratulations on reaching the end of this video course. We're going to talk about a secret tip that you can use to outrank your competitors. So we briefly talked about why having a longer video was important, right? So one secret tip that we can give you is that what we have found that works is the following longer videos in the sense of live streams, which means you get on YouTube and you talk to people live. You have webinar replays and videos where people expect them to be longer. So in other words, people are expecting these to be longer. If you make a 
normal video that people expect to be five minutes and you make it an hour, then you're not really going to hit that 50%. But when you have a live stream or a webinar replay, usually people typically expect it to be at least one hour. So because people expect it to be one hour or longer, they expect to take time out of their busy schedule to actually watch your longer video. And what we found is these work really well compared to the average video. So let's discuss what you need to do in terms of software or even web applications that you need to create live streams and webinar replays. So in order to create a YouTube live stream, you're going to need to have a broadcasting software. There are many, you can go to YouTube and type in live stream, how to set it up. And there's a lot of videos on that, but this is one particular one that we have used and that has worked really, really well for us. It's called open broadcaster software and it's free best of all. And that is located at obsproject.com. So as you can see here, there is versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's simply as easy as downloading and you can start streaming. So the reason why you need this software is it basically what it does is it connects to the YouTube live stream system. And when you're ready, you click record and you're good to go. Now I'm not going to go in depth on how to use this product just simply because there are so many different options and so many different ways of using it. Now, like I said, the tip is when outranking your competitors to have longer views, this is good for kind of a face to face talking head type long video. Now, if you want to use a camera, you can do that. If you want to do something like screen capture, meaning, you're going to show your screen, then you're going to want to use something like GoToWebinar. And you can go to gotomeeting.com slash webinar to do that. Another tool that we have used, which as of now it is free and who knows it could change. So GoToWebinar does cost money, but it's a nice way to kind of engage with people. So this is the route that I would go if you are engaging with people. If you're not engaging with people and you're simply doing screen capture, there is a tool called use loom. Let me show it to you. So use loom.com loom is essentially a Chrome plugin. And what it does is it allows you to record your screen. It's super easy to use. In fact, it's super, super fast. It's so fast that you can literally start recording and within seconds when you're done, you'll have the video in hand and you can download the actual video file to your computer really fast. So those are the three options that I would go to and really depends on the avenue that you want to take. So like I said, create a longer video, but just don't create any content. Make sure that the content is valuable because you want to make sure that people watch all the way through, or if not, watch at least 